to set it up where there would be one like main stage where you can do something of similar ilk, exactly, and do, uh, you know, showcases and get, like, people who are in the industry to scope you out or whatever. But there's a lot of, like, bars and stuff, and they all have the cover bands or these acoustic bands or whatever the case may be. Where are they going to practice? Yeah, I don't know where they would rehearse. I mean, They're not. we used there's to no rehearse to here, but... Here. We used to have all the fucking kids at the end of my driveway listening to us three nights a week rehearsing in, our, in the garage. We had, to, we had to put boxes up in front of We had to try to pad it because everybody was out there with like these, you know, who knows? Someone might be stealing our fucking songs while we're writing them. Well, we did the same, we did the same thing um, with Cats and Yama, the live band. You know, um, we would either uh, rehearse. Well, originally we started rehearsing in Gerald's um, grandma, because they owned a, a place in Gerald's Bayside. back pocket. I'm no, just, not close yeah, pocket. I'm just <laughs> In Katsuyama, you know, grandma lived downstairs, his mom lived on the main floor, and, you know, we had all our stuff set up down there, and then when we picked up um, Brian and Larry, which Larry, by the way, is brother love, uh, sorry, what's his face again that wants to be called brother love? What's his name? I have no idea, dude. Oh, I can't think of it. Dude. What's his? Why, why can't I think of his name? I can't. I, when, I, whenever someone asks me something, I can't think. Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy wants. Oh to yeah, him. that's right. Yeah, I remember and, that. And Larry's got a copy written, so it's a beautiful thing. I'm waiting for that to come to fruition. That's Bullshit. fucking funny. Yeah. So I can't wait for that. The, those diamonds, if he wants to try to push it, and he's doing, he's doing well, brother love. Um, Larry's doing great. He's got a band out in uh, Tennessee, and he's um, he's gigging out there. But we used to, you know, practice in his mo- in his house in his mom's basement, you know, all hours of the day, you know, in uh, Fresh Meadows. You know what so- cha- really chaps my ass, bro? When someone books a fucking interview, I knew the guy wasn't gonna call, bro. But I'm not going to babysit anybody, man. If you book an interview, are you a responsible adult and fucking call? This has been an epidemic. I'm, I used to babysit them. I'm done babysitting fucking people. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit. You, you contacted me. Right. That's why it's live from Cats and Yammer's Laundry Mat. So I'm just <laughs> checking my phone periodically. But it would also ring and interrupt my call with you. But... So, now I know why it took 26 years for them to make a new fucking album. I'm not even going to go into it any further than that. But I will play the song at the end of my segment, just so everybody knows who we're discussing here. <laughs> I may not. We'll see. I, I'm, I, I used to call them all out for their dumb shit, but it's like, really, you fucking... If you're t- in the industry full time... Which, I am not in the industry full-time. My fingers are in a bunch of different cookie jars. Because I don't like to just do one thing. You know? So, I can understand, you know, something of that ilk. You're not going to get an album every year. But if you're in the industry, and that's what you're doing for a living. That you're breathing it, you're touring it, you're prom- you uh, should be... I'm you just a ball buster. That's part of your background as the musician. It's not just getting on that stage or writing the music. It's about whoever's in that band putting in their two cents, everybody coming together, promoting whatever you got to do to get it out there because that is what you're supposed to. Uh, I'm just a ball buster. I, you know, but I'm. I'm just saying. I mean, I, I, I always follow through, but it's just, it, it, it makes me now. Now I don't, you know. How can I book again? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We did something with uh, Prickly Rickly. We gave the guy two shots. And the singer of the band swears he never even knew about the interview. And this guy's fucking booking interviews with me, his manager. It's like, really? Now Now I, I mean, I even seen two of the CDs used yesterday. There was a little scratch on them. And I just was like, you know what? Fuck it. I ain't even buying the used copy. Because I'm still like, anno- I shouldn't be like that, but it annoys the fuck out of me. You know, I put a lot of work into the show. A lot of money goes into it. And that's another reason, you know, I got to come up with these ideas. But like Ricky had a guy he wanted me to contact. But the manager is from one of these other radio sites. Right. 
you'll see now all this. I own this Grindstone Records name since like 1991, dude. There's a couple other people who tried to use the name, but I had to shut that down. So I created Grindstone Records. I, I, I put it on pause for a couple of years. I'm bringing it back now, but you'll see that these other competitors will be now starting a record label and putting a compilation CD out, of course. Right. Of so course. It, it, it's just the way it's going to fucking trend. Mark my words. You will see. Well, I'll tell you who, it, who these people are. You're familiar with them. I'll have to say that they have to use bands in false voting and popularity contests. They they trick all these bands into putting their fucking votes out for band of the year. I pick my bands from my fucking heart. There's a right. big difference, bro. There's a oh, big absolutely. difference. You're using the fans all to build the name for yourself from nothing. You have sixty thousand likes, but you have four listeners. No one listens to that fucking shit. Yeah. I know no one listens to it. You got bands out there trying to hawk your name. I have fucking six, seven hundred likes on Facebook. I don't give two shits, bro, because most of those people are are list, actual listeners. Right. I don't need to sell you something that you don't want. Because you have, but I have sixty thousand likes, so I could sell some advertising. I don't need it. I yeah. do my show from my heart. Some of the bands help me promote. I have to use them because I'm playing them on the show. I'm not, you know, that's what it's all about is 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 the cross promotion. But they, it, it's it's just annoying. And and if it wasn't for shows like me and a couple of other ones that started ten years ago. They would have no basis for what they even fucking do now. And they try to talk shit about me. And they have people listening right now to the show. And they have people that are on my Facebook page that they don't think that I know are trying to snag fucking little ideas. That's why I'm very... I I don't put a lot of shit out there anymore. Because I'm tired of it. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, you should be flattered. I am, but when you're, con- I know when you're contacting my guest, because that guest may be my good friend from fucking 25 years ago, because I toured and been in the industry. They're contacting me saying, hey, man, they're trying to get me on before they get on your show so I can give them the goods instead of you. That ain't how we roll. My, yeah. my people and the people I book on the show are very loyal to the show and the people I have on this comp CD. So that's all that matters to me, but it's still fucking annoying, and you'll see it. You'll you'll see that. I already know it. Uh, there's a there's a radio guy. I'm not going to name his name. He's he's out in New York. I know so, who you're talking about. He had he had Dave on, and I you know approached him and said, "Hey, cool, you know, Dave is on there," and then he's like, "Oh yeah, I'll get you on. I'll get you on." And what was that? And you know who I'm talking about, so I'm not going to name the name. But that was what six seven months ago. Yeah, and he still has it, and I still every once in a while I'll trickle out an email. I go, so uh, when's this interview going to take place, huh? Just to break his nuts. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, man. That guy's got a lot of shit going on too, but um, I mean, I he, he does. does a good show, but I know he does. I, but you know what? You don't make a promise. I I stay grounded make, with my well, shit. That's all I could say yeah. about that. Is you I stay grounded, walk, and that's what that's the bottom line. That's the way it's supposed to be. Like, I could as easily have said, I, I didn't feel like doing the show today, but I still persevere through the fucking shit, and I do it. I could have said, I don't feel good tonight, and fucking, and said, fucking, I, you know, my fucking leg is killing me. I did it because if this guy does call and follow through with the interview, I need to be here. Right, and then you look like the idiot. I the look like the fucking asshole. Right. Uh, that, that's not happening. And we but, can't have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, if we're going to be that guy, at least we know it. Right? I, Forcefully. I, I decided I'm not going to play the song. I just deleted that motherfucker out. Um, I am, though. I'm, 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 I'm just about on 55 minutes, dude. So stay here with me. I'm going to sure. play another song and we'll shoot the shit here in just a minute. I'm going to play a song by someone I met on Facebook who... 
who must have found me through one of the bands, through my street-level marketing on social media. That's what I like to call my record label, too. It's street-level marketing. It's not going to be this blown-out label. But, of course, you know, I get people interested, and I find certain people interesting. And this is called I Rape the World by Judy Ripper. I'm Jay Stone. You listen to my show at rockmetaltalk.com with Katzen Yama. Yama, Yama, Yama. out with your cock out jay stone show leave a message after the tone i just wanted to say i've been listening to the jay stone show and ever since i started listening to this show my bunions have stopped hurting oh my god i've been wasting all this money on bunion ointment when i could have just been listening to the jay stone show this is Bertrude, and i just thought i'd let you know ciao Jay Stone Show makes me hot. Oh my God, I am on the air. 
Oh my God, I am on the air with Jay flipping stone. 